Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Richard, and I am the community director here at Terraform Together. Today, we're going to be going through our root cellar build. This is the final video of this series. We'll be answering a lot of the questions that you guys had, telling you what we screwed up on, what we did well, what we would do again, and just going through details of this build. So why did we build this? This was a lot of work, a lot of man hours, a lot, a lot of bags. But it was really important as our first project for this community because we needed a controlled environment to store food for a large group of people. So through our eco residency program, we'll have anywhere between five and 15 people out here. That's a lot of mouths to feed. And again, if it's 105 degrees outside, that's not a great place to store produce and things like that. We are also on solar. So our solar system is very, very limited out here. So we could not afford to keep a air conditioned room. We have no air conditioning out here at all. A few stats on this, because I know a lot of people are curious about this. What did it cost? All of our man hours, all of our time is all volunteer labor through our eco residency program. So material cost is really the only expense that we have. In total, our material cost was around $2,000. Very, very inexpensive. That was a couple hundred bucks for the excavation, probably about a thousand dollars for the bags, another couple hundred bucks in barbed wire. A lot of the stuff that we used on this build came directly from the land. Our labor costs, if you were to pay somebody to do this, is high. And I think that's why a lot of people don't do this sort of build because this was around nine months of bag work. We worked a couple times a week, um, a lot on the weekends, that sort of deal. How it functions? The highest I've seen the temperature get in there is about 75 degrees, and the lowest I've seen it get is about 50. Since we started posting this series, y'all have had a lot of questions. I just want to put it out there. I am happy to answer any questions that you guys have about this project or any other project. Just leave a comment below. I look and read every one of them. I respond to as many as possible. Um, I'm happy to get your feedback. I don't claim to know everything. And so if you all have a better way of doing this, certainly let me know, add it in the comments below. Some of the questions I've been getting on this. I think the biggest one is, what about rain? Does it leak? No. It doesn't. We've been through two monsoon seasons with this and have not had a drop of water in this building. The second question I get is, is it humid down there? How do you manage, you know, mold and things like that? We have vent pipes. Um, so we have two vent pipes on the front and two vent pipes on the back. The two on the front go all the way down to the ground. The two on the back stick out from the top. What this does is Cold air sinks, hot air rises. We have air circulating through here passively with no electricity that helps keep mold issues away. So I wanna go through some of the challenges, some of the learning, some of what we screwed up. I think the first thing and the biggest thing that I've mentioned a handful of times in our comments and things like that is I would never, ever, ever do or recommend individual bag building ever again. There is systems that I wasn't familiar with when we started this project um, that I feel are vastly superior, not necessarily in a structural sense, but more in a how to build and time and labor and energy expended to build this. So since this build, we have switched to a system called Hyper Adobe. It's these big, long red bag tubes that, you know, you just kind of mix and fill up and go, uh, you know, in one continuous bag. I feel after doing Hyper Adobe and after doing Earth Bag that Hyper Adobe is vastly superior because you're going in continuous bags. Um, so you're not having to lift individual bags. The other advantage to Hyper Adobe over individual earth bag, you have a continuous form. With these, the earth bags are held together with barbed wire. 
Um, whereas the Hyper Adobe, it's one solid piece because each layer melds into the layer below it and above it. Another thing that we would have done differently is to dig deeper. So we dug at about 10 feet deep and that gives us about an eight foot ceiling. But what happened is basically we couldn't pile a lot of dirt on top. Um, there's only maybe two inches of dirt on top of this root cellar. If I were to do it differently, I would have had them dig another foot or two down so that way we can get more insulation, get a better temperature regulation down there that's more consistent. Another learning that we had on this was um, our systems. Our systems while we were building this were terrible. Our sifting system was a table that you had to basically put the dirt on and then hand sift. Since then, we've switched to essentially a screen that's sloped on a frame that you can just throw the dirt into. It's so much easier. It goes, I mean, literally like 10 times faster than um, how we sifted all of the dirt for this. The other thing is a cement mixer. As you sift the dirt, you then have to wet the dirt so that way it compacts and forms into bricks. I just, I don't know why. I don't know why we didn't buy the cement mixer, but since I've actually gotten two cement mixers for our Hyper Adobe, and that just saves so much time and energy because hand mixing is really, really difficult. One thing that I think uh, I would have done differently on this build is to put in more cleats. That's one thing that we put in some, but I think you can't have enough cleats in the walls. And what that is, is basically a two by four um, with some nails sticking out of it that is stuck into the wall that you can actually screw into. I want to go through some of the pros. Honestly, I love this root cellar. It is such a great functional piece on this property. We use it all the time, every day, people are going in and out of there getting food and stuff. It keeps things really nice and controlled. So I would absolutely, absolutely recommend this to any homesteader. They're amazing. Um, we don't have to use electricity. I don't have to worry about things going out. I know it's going to be controlled. and. One thing that's really, really nice is uh, we've only had one mouse in here in almost two years that we've been using it. Um, that can't be said about any other structure on this property because they get into everywhere. I think I really enjoy the stairs on this. I know a lot of people do root cellars with ladders. To me, that seems difficult. Um, it seems like something where you're having to carry boxes of food up and down. So we took some extra time. We took a lot of extra labor to build this little kind of dome walkway thing going down into it. But I'm really, really happy we did that. The other thing I really like about this is the sustainability of it. We did use woven bags that are plastic, but those bags, once they're covered, um, will last hundreds and hundreds of years. Most of this build, the majority, 95% of it, is all just dirt that was excavated from the land. So we're building with stuff that's local, we're building with stuff that we got for free. I am confident that this build will last several hundred years. With all of that information, let me take you guys on a tour of our root cellar. So starting off, we have our little walkway down. What I really love about this is it looks like a boot. <laughs> this wasn't intentional. It just kind of happened. This is our, our boot cellar. Um, and so it's kind of funny because um, this is the first thing you see when you come onto the property. It looks very inconspicuous. I have a lot of people think it's the toilet or like a weird garden shed or something like that. What I love about that is like, it doesn't look like much from the ground level, but what you don't realize is there's a whole room underneath the earth. All right, coming down, we have our entryway. This here is a piece of art that I am working on. The story behind this is we had a virus that came through while we were building this that killed off a lot of the rabbits in the area. Found one called the Wildlife Service basically they said to bury it as deep as you can so that no animals gets it and it's to help s stop the spread of that virus. Flopsy was a little rabbit that we saw every morning that played in the wood pile outside of our bedroom window and he died and so this is an homage to Flopsy who was buried in the root cellar because we had a 10-foot hole that we were backfilling and so we buried him as deep as we could to keep the virus in hands. Let's come into the cellar. So this is our cellar. Uh, it is about 10 foot by 10 foot square. 
that's about as big as you want to go with a square structure. The reason I went with square instead of round, round is always going to be stronger and better and you can do bigger, um, but round is also really hard to put shelves in and so you lose a lot of space that way so that's why we did square on this build. So going through a couple of the cool features of this place, we did put electricity down here. So this is all runoff of solar. It was really important to one, just be able to have lights down here. We're down underground, so having lights is nice, but also uh, I brew beer. And so I wanted to have a kegerator down here. I wanted to have a refrigerator down here. Very basic setup, a few outlets on the wall, a little breaker box and some lights. Um, that's all we really needed down here. But that is a big, big deal. Uh, one thing that we thought about doing was uh, some grow lights down here. So maybe being able to grow some vegetables in a place that again is temperature controlled and away from the pests and bugs. Up to this point, we haven't done that just because again, everything out here is a work in progress, but that's something that we may do in the future is be able to actually set up a couple shelves out here to do some microgreens or something like that. As far as our finish out on this, uh, we went very, very simple. As you can see, I kept the bags uh, exposed. That is totally okay as long as they stay out of the light, which they do 99. <laughs> We also have our lights on a timer. Uh, people forget to shut the light off, so that's what that is. <laughs> Show you guys a couple of the cool things we have down here. We have a kegerator. So I used to brew beer. Um, I would love to get back into it once we get water security out here, because brewing beer takes a ton, a ton of water. Um, and I can't quite justify it right now, but we have this kegerator down here. Right now we are using it as a refrigerator. One thing that's really cool about using a deep freeze as a refrigerator is they take a lot less electricity. They're a lot better insulated. A couple things we did to convert this freezer into a refrigerator is we got this thing. You plug this into your wall and then plug your refrigerator freezer into here, set your temperature. We're at 38 degrees right now. And basically this will kick off once it gets to 38 degrees. So your freezer, is not running as often and will not use as much electricity. The other thing I do on all of my refrigerators out here is set them on a timer. This timer kicks on uh, basically at 8 a.m. and shuts off at 8 p.m. At night, we're not opening and closing this. Uh, we are a vegetarian community out here, so a lot of our food, you know, if it sits overnight, um, it's not like, meat that's going to rot or anything like that. So by having this, um, our refrigerator is only on during good daylight hours. Um, if you're not accessing it, these freezers will stay cold for a really, really long time. As far as our storage in here, um, these are all just very basic garage shelves. I really like having the wire racks for our produce. It just gets a little more airflow in there and stuff rots less frequently. I mentioned our ceiling. Um, this is all tongue and groove, three quarter inch plywood. We have a low VOC sealer on the bottom and then we actually use, use motor oil on the top to help seal everything up. All of this is scrap steel. I wanna show you guys our vents. So this is a three inch vent pipe, uh, ABS plastic pipe. That goes through the wall straight up. And then we also have two hot vents coming out here. For our floor, this is very, very, very simple. All this is, is pea gravel. We put about two feet down and that's it. That's our floor. So if we do get water in here, it's gonna basically act like a French drain system, go down into the earth I wanted to touch on these cleats. So you can see these pieces of wood sticking out of the wall. What this is, is a piece of plywood, nails going up, nails going down, and then a two by four attached. What this does is let us attach things to the wall. So this is another look at our vent pipes. This helps keep mold and stuff like that from becoming an issue, moisture from becoming an issue. If you see, these two are our cool pipes. So they go down all the way to the bottom of the cellar. And then on this side, we have our two hot pipes. So those are at the top of the cellar. The way we've oriented these is these two are facing south. And the reason is our driving winds shoot this way. So we'll get a little bit more wind pushing down into there. 
And then these two are pointed out that way. And so that way um, the hot air can just naturally rise out. It's not being forced into the cellar. We also put uh, screening material and hardware cloth over all of these pipes. And that's just to keep the bugs and keep the mice out. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this build was inspirational to you. I hope it answered some questions. I hope you learned a little bit. If you found this interesting, please consider a subscription. Those subscriptions, that little click of a button goes a long way to help out our channel. Let us create these videos for you guys, teach people how to live more sustainably. If you have any questions about this build or about off-grid living, sustainable living, natural building, things like that, Leave a comment. I read every single one of them. I respond to as many as possible. Our video next week is all about our solar system. So thank you guys for watching. Go build something cool.